Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Lego set from the Scooby-Doo line, um, which has unfortunately ended. This is a retired line, but it is the Mystery Mansion set 75904 with 860 pieces. This is a set that came out in 2015 and it was the biggest of the Scooby-Doo uh, sets from that theme. It included six minifigures. We had Shaggy, Scooby, and both of those did come also in other sets. I remember they were in the Mystery Machine set and uh, some of the smaller sets, relatively common. We get a pretty cool knight, which I'm sure has been seen before. Um, we get a vampire, um, again, something that we've probably seen before, as, as well as a glow-in-the-dark ghost, which is really cool. His little sheet is glow-in-the-dark and he carries a uh, ball and chain, like he's here to haunt your soul. Uh, very cool, and I know for... Specifically, this minifigure is just white with a black head. Very simple, but uh, very cool. Very, very ghoul, nonetheless. <laughs> we also do get Daphne and the very coveted Velma Lego minifigure, who I think looks fantastic. And she's worth, I think, like $80 or so. She's very... Uh, very expensive if you have to replace her. Um, so this set originally retailed for $89.00. All right, so overall, I think this castle is pretty cool. It is very tall, um, and I love the use of purple and brown in this set. It gives it a very Scooby-Doo, you know, old-school cartoon feel, um, but also has some of the most impressive Lego elements I have ever seen in a build um, that are like trick-of-the-eye things. Uh, just very, very cool. We do also get a little uh, small motorcycle for uh, Shaggy and Scooby more than likely with a little backpack on the back. Um, nothing super special, but it is kind of neat uh, that they do include this. You get a getaway vehicle, so that's important. And you will have to forgive me. Uh, this castle is relatively tall, or mansion rather. I think it's a castle, honestly. Um, so we'll have to just move up in portions. But as you can tell, maybe just by looking at it, um, it's definitely an illusion set in terms of it looks like it's falling apart. Um, we have like cattywampus pillars in the center here, which I think look really good. Those are done by a... Uh, a Technic pin that lets them move back and forth um, to give it an off-balanced look. Uh, it looks super cool. Uh, we have a couple of what looks like maybe tiles coming off uh, by this little triangle or this wedge. Uh, one by two cheese slope. It looks like it's falling. Uh, this cool window print right here. That's a sticker, but it looks awesome. It looks like the window is kind of getting smushed through time. Um, I love the boarded up windows on the front here. And again, the little stickers, they look super good. Um, the nice black accents also look pretty decent. There's a lot to look at. Again, it looks very Scooby-Doo. The outside is very aesthetically pleasing to what look, would look like a abandoned house. Um, on the other side, we get a really cool greenhouse, which is super common in older days to have a greenhouse like this. So it's very fitting that it would be in this. This one is particularly brown. Um, I do like it. I love these broken glass pieces here to symbolize the glass broken out. And we have some clear stickers with bugs um, and then a couple stickers with plants on the sides. Uh, super, super cool. I really like this jack-o'-lantern here. I love that jack-o'-lantern piece. It does also work as a hood, I believe. Um, yeah, there's just a little head in here, uh, and you can put a minifigure head in here because it doubles as a costume. Um, this particular piece does, but it looks really, really good, and we do have some features on the inside, which I'll get to. So we do have the front door, and again, I really like those pillars. Moving up to this top balcony, we do have a working clock which is pretty cool. If you spin it with a contraption on the back, it spins the clock as well as transforms the bat into a balding vampire. Uh, this particular vampire is missing his hair. He needs, I'm assuming it's probably on order or whatnot, but yeah, he normally has black hair, but uh, he is there still. And you get a little bat too that he could change into. This rotating feature is pretty nice and it does move the clock as well. Um, so you can keep it on there if you want it to look more, more castle-y, um, not like somebody's looming over you. Uh, but there is a relatively large balcony within here. So that's nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and flip the castle over. We'll take you room by room. Looking further into the inside of the greenhouse, this top roof does tilt upward if you want to give the plants some air. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we have a giant Venus flytrap. We have another jack-o'-lantern in here as well as a bone. Um, I'm assuming the bone is from the Venus flytrap's lunch. He can completely come off and he has an articulated mouth. 
Uh, he just sits on this this stud here. This really, I think, should be a, a two by two jumper stud so that it, nothing comes off. That is a little bit hard to remove from the base, um, but very colorful. I like it a lot. It could probably eat a minifigure, it looks like. Ignore the fact that his ball and change, change just came off, but yeah, he could totally eat a minifigure. That's really cool. Um, but yep, he just sits inside. You can have him come out too if you'd like, um, but yeah, he's just right in there. In the center of the castle, this is obviously the front door that you come through, and there's not a lot in here. It is relatively plain, um, and there is a reason for that. Um, if you twist these two knobs right here, there is a giant wrecking ball that comes down and just will knock the life out of you. I mean, it will yeet you. Um, super interesting piece the way this is made. I've not really seen a giant spiky ball like this. Um, I like the concept of it. So if he were to put, let's say a minifigure coming in through the door here, um, I've just set him briefly on the studs, but it just smacks him in the face. So if you take him off the studs, maybe, uh, kind of maybe balance him or just barely set him on there, it might, yeah, knock him off. So that's pretty cool. The mystery gang's got to watch out for that. Um, but that would be why the entrance is totally empty. But I really, really like this aspect of the, the big ball. I think that's cool. And it sets up there very nice. It doesn't really fall unless you jostle the set a lot. On this other side here, this was just the section I was showing you from the outside with the vampire. And then in the very top, he has his coffin, which is a really cool printed piece. Um, I think it looks really super nice. And it actually opens up and you can put the vampire in here. He fits all the way in. It's nice and big. I like it a lot. It's very, very cool. Um, and it just clicks together with this little uh, pressurized hinge. It just adds a little bit of friction um, to the coffin to get it to close. So this section, while tall, it does not hold a lot of cool detail. Um, you will find that though on this other side here. Probably the most detailed part of this room is gonna be this kitchen. I love the blue and white tiling, and they did use jumper studs on this, so you could put a character in here, um, and it, it resembles a kitchen because of that tile. We get a nice rat, because of course this mansion is aband abandoned, and uh, we're gonna have vermin in here. Um, there is a small, um, I guess, an oven or a cabinet, which can open. Unfortunately, there's nothing inside. Um, I guess this is actually a stove because looking up here, we have a pot and some burners. And then there's a really, really gross looking refrigerator. Um, definitely looks like there's rotten food. That's probably attracted the rat here. Um, I do like this sticker. It's another clear sticker and it looks just, yeah, totally infested. On the inside though, it's very, very clean. So looks are deceiving. Um, I do always, always, always love these little cabinets. I think that they're so cute. Um, we also get a Krabby Patty, which is um, kind of interesting that that's in here. Probably that's something that Shaggy and Scooby whipped up while they were um, searching for clues. <laughs> it It is really cool. I love this little printed seated bun that looks really good. And it's done in the old style Krabby Patty, form, uh, Krabby Patty formula, Krabby Patty way. I think that was the first uh, Lego series to make hamburgers, but it sits on a jumper as well, um, just and connects in the bottom there. So that's probably something that Shaggy and Scooby were making in the kitchen when they should have been working on the mystery and because, you know, they get hungry. Um, and then on the other side, of course, we have a little sink with the, the two little angular sink basins um, and then the little ketchup squirter as the sink. Looks pretty cute. You can see the windows in the back. Um, I think this is a really detailed little room. I think it looks really, really cute. Moving up, we get this room, um, and it's, there's not a lot to it. Um, you can see the, there's a, a window behind it, but there's nothing over here, and it obviously looks like there's a locked box, so we need a key. But it does unlock, and you can pull this little panel back, and we have another little refrigerator, only this one's stickered to be like a safe. And there's some gold bars in here, which is actually a pretty cool piece to see those little flat gold bars. That's actually worth a lot of money. So that's a good mystery to find right there. Of course, you're going to run into a knight, a vampire, and a ghost along the way, but that's obviously just Scooby-Doo for you. Um, overall, I, I really like the design of this set. I love the way it's got some unique architecture that makes it look like it's unstable and about to fall apart. I love the purple and brown. I think they complement each other well. Um, and the build on this is just really smart and it comes with lots of cool little details. And overall, I think it's really fun. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. It's not something you can find in stores these days, but I hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys later.